Hey everybody, welcome back. If you go to any mountain biking discussion forum, you're gonna find at least a couple of topics talking about this. Cheap Asian manufacturers. My box came from Singapore, and no, this is not a set of wheels, which is usually what people get. This is a carbon frame, a full suspension carbon frame from an Asian manufacturer. Why don't we check this out? And I'm gonna start by saying kudos to Trifox, that's the manufacturer, because they sent me this frame full review with no strings attached. They just sent it to me so I can experience it like any one of you and just give you my honest opinion. So let's get to it. And the very first thing that I noticed was the weight or the lack of weight of this frame and the hardware attached to it. And as you can see, it comes pretty well packed or wrapped, I should say. And if you thought about a Scott Spark when you saw this, you're not alone. This is actually a Trifox MFM 100. It's what they call it. Manufactured in Asia, a full suspension cross country rig. Cross country bike that just like Scott Spark is gonna have the shock upside down installed here. Can be installed with a 100 millimeter shock. That's 165 by 40. But if you install this with 165 by 45, you can build it up with 115 millimeter of travel. So God forbid you can build this one as a down country rig. Shock mounting hardware, it's included and it's held in place by this spacer. At the bottom, you have room for a trunnion mount shock and you also have these two bolts included in the package in case you are going for a trunnion mount shock. And this is a line for the remote if you install this as a cross country rig. Torque value for these bolts or pivots is written right on them, which is very convenient. And they're fairly low, 12 Newton meters being only for this main rocker pivot. The seat stay bolts are installed from the inside, 10 Newton meters again. And I should have called them flex stays because that's the design of the swing arm of this bike, just like the new thumb jumper or the new transition spur. What that means is that you have one pivot point down here, second pivot point connecting to your rocker, but you don't have the third pivot right here, and the seat stays have to flex by a few degrees as the suspension moves up and down. And talking about this little rocker, this is made out of aluminum, no fancy materials here, and sometimes it's made out of one piece. In this case, it's made out of two pieces, one on each side, connecting the shock to the rest of the swing arm. Rear brake caliper is post mount. It's gonna be installed here inside the rear triangle and the hose is gonna come out on the inside. That's a pretty common design these days. Frame is providing enough clearance for 29 or 235 tires. And this is how much space is left here next to the chain stays. There's quite a bit more room around the tire up top here on the seat stays. Boost 148 spacing in the back. The through axle is provided as well. You also get a derailleur hanger that gets installed fairly easy. It doesn't come installed from the factory. It's held in place by this tiny bolt and then it's gonna be secured in place with the through axle. On the drive side, you're gonna see the routing for your derailleur cable. It's coming out right on top of the chain stays, which is something that I like because it works well with both Shimano and SRAM drivetrains. Back here to the middle of the bike, you can see that hose coming out of the chain stays is going to go underneath the bottom bracket and come back inside the down tube. This is internal routing for all the hoses and cables for this bike. And also here you're going to see the PF92 bottom bracket. So it's press fit, not threaded, something that I've never had issues with. I don't know what your experience is like. The seat tube, you already have a line coming up here for internally routed dropper. This is a 34.9 seat clamp, which is not provided. 31.6 diameter seat post. However, because of this main pivot over here, you don't have a lot of room to insert your dropper in the frame. In fact, this is the maximum I could insert this seat post into my uh, medium frame. And that is less than seven inches or about 17 centimeters. But keep in mind that every dropper has an actuator at the end of about two centimeters. So you pretty much have about 15 centimeters maximum insertion of your seat post in this frame. 
And I passed by this extra opening here and I didn't mention it for you. That is separate from the one for the shock remote and I think is for DI2 installation. That might be giving you an idea of when this frame was designed because here at the bottom, this is not only down to protection, but underneath here, if you use a 2.5 millimeter hex, you can slide this protection back and underneath you have a holder for a DI2 battery, I believe. Otherwise, you're gonna see the inside of the frame and there's not much to see over here, but you can see the uh, routing for the uh, housing and the hoses going underneath the bottom bracket. It's gonna be interesting how this works because they are not affixed here at the entry or exit points in any way. They're just gonna be fixed here at the back in case of the brake hose and also up here at the top, but I don't know yet if this is gonna pinch the cable and hold it in place. And talking about that, Yes, all these hoses or cables are routed internally through the frame, but there is no tube in tube here. So these are flopping around on the inside. That's usually not the end of the world because Jaguar is giving us this internal housing damper, which is a tube that goes around the hoses and cables that you run through the frame. So you make this completely silent. And talking about the down tube, there is no other protection here highly recommend to install a film. And you can see this uh, matte black finish, which is actually nicer than I thought with the shiny Trifox logo printed right here on the down tube. The only paint imperfections that I noticed are here around that seat state chip. And that is consistent for both sides of the bike. You have two ports on each side of the head tube, which is something that I love because I can run my hoses whichever way I want. You need a two millimeter Allen or hex to remove that bolt. And then you can lift up this port cover that is made out of aluminum, I assume. And talking about the headset, this is tapered and fairly short at 95 millimeters for this medium frame. And it does take internal headsets, so IS headsets. You can see the top bearing sitting right in there. This is 42 millimeter diameter. The bottom bearing is 52 millimeter diameter. I'm gonna put a link for a headset like this in the description of the video. And not much else to see here on the drive side of the bike aside for clearance for your cranks. And this chainstay is actually built fairly flat. So I would be surprised if the maximum we can install here is 34 teeth. That's what's specified on their site. But if you look here, this is fairly flat. So I think you can install whatever chain ring you want, probably even a 36 or a 38. And if you're looking for ISCG tabs, well, there's none to be had over here. So there's no chain guard or bash guard that you can install on this frame. Inside the front triangle, you have the two bosses for a bottle mount. By the look of it, you can install a full size bottle in here, no problem. The weight of this medium frame is supposed to be 2250. It's 2173 on my scale, but you have to add a seat post clamp. You got to add the derailleur hanger and the axle. And that brings it up to 2255, which is pretty much spec. And don't worry about that cable cutter because I zeroed my scale with it. So not bad at all for a full suspension frame. Obviously, you're going to have to add the weight of the shock to this. And I kept calling it cross country or down country bike, but what about geometry? And if you look at the seat tube, this is at 74.7. So it's not too, too slack, but not too steep either. Head tube is at 68.5, which is kind of modern for cross country. Not the latest, but not bad at all. If you look at the chain stays, these are 438 millimeters across the board for all four sizes. Again, kind of standard for a bike that is supposed to be good at pedaling. Top tube, important for pedaling position, is at 600 millimeters. My Yetis are around 604, 605. But if you look at the reach here, this is 442, which is the same with my new Yeti Arc. So geometry is fairly modern and definitely look at sizing before you decide which one you need. Buying the frame from their site gives you three years warranty and you can pick the size obviously and one of the few colors that they offer. 
I really like the look of this stealth black though and I am planning to build this as a bit more of a down country bike with 115 millimeter travel in the rear and a 120 fork. Have you ever used cheap Chinese carbon frames? I know a lot of people have tried hardtails but what about the full suspension? Have you ever used Trifox carbon frames? Let me know what you think in the comments below. I hope you found this useful and as usual don't forget to like, subscribe, comment and until next time hope to see you folks on the trails. Cheers guys! Cheers!